It's an interesting play on words that the potter is an actual the potter in the potter's house. And Ezekiel was sent to watch that vessel. And what is another title for Ezekiel? Yahweh uses for Yechezkel, son of man. It was the son of man watching that vessel being made new in the Father. Amen. Not a different vessel, the same clay. Oh, so the Yoch second Yochanan, brothers and sisters, is the epilogue of the prologue and the chapter. Second Yochanan is the epilogue of what happened to our twisted sister parents. Turn your neighbor and say, our forefathers were twisted sisters. Are you with me? Man. Our forefathers never met an idol they didn't like, or a pagan they didn't like, or a goat they didn't want to worship. All right? Anybody but the true Elohim. And that's still the case. And it's still the case today. So now Yochanan doesn't let this thing hang. Yahweh, in Yochanan's later years, brings the epilogue, what became of these two twisted sisters? Carrie, that's what this is all about. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not a little chapter in between 1st Yochanan and Jude or, and, or Yehuda and 1st Yochanan and Revelation. No. It's there for a reason. And the reason is to show you that Yochanan had this revelation that the twisted sisters were not left in the nations. That through the good news, through the Vesorot, they are returning physically to Israel and spiritually to the ways, the knowledge, the understanding, the purpose, and the divine mysteries of the kingdom of Yahweh. Now watch, verse 1. The, the elder, look at verse 1. Yochanan Bey. The elder to a chosen courier. Who's the elder? Yochanan himself to the chosen Kuria. Okay? So there's a, a believer. Is Kuria a believer? Yes. yes. Okay. What is the Greek word Kurios? Lord. She is not only now no longer a twisted sister, she's a Lord over her circumstance. She's a Lord over her former depravity. She's a Lord over her former waywardness. She's a lord over her former. The Greek word kudia is the is the same as the Greek word kurios, where it refers to the Greek word hadasha, kurios, Yesu Christu, the Master Yahshua Hamoshiach, kurios, Yesu Christu. So now she's no longer this kudia is no longer twisted. She has become more than a conqueror. Romans eight twenty eight through him who restored her to the ways of Israel. Is anyone getting this? Yes. Amen. The elder to the chosen Korea. Now she's no longer twisted. She is. Now we're going to see if Korea is Judah or Ephraim. Now we're going to see. We're about to see. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Um, there were two cursed sisters, both unfaithful, both separated from Yahweh because of Torah breaking. Mm -hmm. Verse 13, we got it. Let's go to verse 13. The children of your chosen sister greet you. So John is writing for who? He's writing for a chosen sister and her children to another chosen sister and her children. Notice, it's not just two houses, it's the two houses and their children. So John is writing on behalf of one chosen sister, sending shalom to another chosen sister and their children. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, as we read 2 Yochanan, we're going to see who Korea is. Korea is the one who is what? Chosen with children. But Yochanan says that I am writing on behalf of your chosen sister. How many chosen sisters are there? Two. Two. There were two twisted sisters, but through the blood of the Brit Chalashah, through the blood of the renewed covenant, through the blood and truth of Yahweh's good news, these two twisted sisters no longer are twisted and barren. They are chosen and productive, reproductive, making Talmudim and children for Yahweh in the ways of Israel. I'm talking about second Yochanan. I'm talking about second Yochanan. I'm not just talking about a couple of pieces of verses on a page. I'm talking about the, the conclusion to what Yahweh has done through the Messiah Yeshua to, uh, to those two twisted sisters. Oh, hallelujah. Now let's look at this. Yochanan says uh, to the elder, Kuria, and her children. Notice, not just Kuria. Ephraim is now reproduced. Hello, does that sound familiar? 
Ephraim, Genesis 48, 19, was prophesied to become the Melohagoyim, or the fullness of the Gentiles. The seed of Ephraim, the son, grandson of Jacob, Yaakov, would fill not just the Jewish nation, but all the nations with the seed, the Zerah, of Jacob. Are you with me? Yes. Ephraim, come here. I'm going to cross my hands. I'm going to take the right hand of the firstborn blessing. I'm not going to put it on Manasseh, the true firstborn, Bechorah. I'm going to cross my hands, put it on Ephraim, because Ephraim's offspring, progenitory, will become the fullness of the Gentile. Hallelujah. Meaning yes. all the Gentile nations will be full of the seed of Ephraim. Was Ephraim an Israelite? I think so. His grandfather was Israel, yes. and his father was Joseph. Yes. So most Israelites are not Jewish, but they are Israelites. Yes. In other words, all yes. Jews yes. are Israelites, but not all Israelites are Jews. I think some of the songs of Zion are going to go up today. Hallelujah. Into, the, into the presence of Yahweh. In other words, there are a lot more non-Jewish Israelites than there are Jewish Israelites. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And so, and so Yochanan writes not just to the chosen elect Kudia, but to her children, or the daughters and sons of returning, what? O-cha-la. What, what, is, what is the Hebrew name for? What is the Hebrew name for Kudia? Ochala. Does Ochala have one child or billions of children? So in the Ruach, on the what level are we talking about now? So, on the deepest mystery level of the four levels of Hebraic interpretation, Yochanan is writing to the sons and daughters of Ephraim who were twisted, who are now chosen and elect. Amen. <laughs> And she carries the name Lord. She's no longer That's under right. the skirt of idolatry, under the skirt of adultery, under the skirt of double-mindedness, under the skirt of Sabbath-breaking. She is Lord over all her past, all her resume, all her abominable ways. She is now Lord over it and not it over her. <laughs> Whom I love in the truth, notice. Whom I love in the truth, you, okay, and not only I, but those who, who have known the truth. He's saying, Ephraim, or Ohala, I love you in the truth. And not only you, but it's not only me who love you in the truth, but all those with me who love you in the truth. Who are all those with Yochanan? Ochaliba, Judah. Where did Yochanan write his, his, his Besarot? In, 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 in the land of Judea, in the land of Judah, among the Jews. He's saying, it's not just I who love you, Ephraim, Ochala. It's all those with me who love the truth. Judah, Ephraim, listen. You're no longer outcast. Judah loves you. Judah loves you. That's the message of 2nd Yochanan. Ephraim, Judah loves you. Judah's ready to reestablish you and grant you full citizenship and recognize you as a full member of the Commonwealth of Israel and not call yourself a, a lucky to be alive, saved, grant to be in Gentile. Oh, Rabbi, I'm so happy to be here with the Jewish people because I'm just a lucky to be saved Gentile and I'm just... <laughs> Grafted in, yeah, I'll be quiet, don't worry. I'm not a real Israelite. I'm just, I'm happy to be around. I'll be quiet, you won't have to worry about me. I won't make a lot of noise. I'll just follow you. I'll just follow you Jews, because I'm just a grafted in, lucky to be around Gentile. That's <laughs> Sorry, honey. There were two chosen sisters. One not better than the other. One equal to the other, both citizens, Ephesians 2, 10, and 11, of the commonwealth of Israel, for he has made of the twain both one new man. What twain? Twain houses. Twain houses. Look at verse 2. 
Listen, if you have gone to a congregation where you were told you were a saved Gentile, run from that congregation. They don't read Second John. They don't want to read Second John because they don't have the wisdom or the understanding or the insight or the revelation to understand and comprehend Second John. And any, anybody that cannot teach you the true meaning of Second John, you need to run from there because they're either going to elevate the Jew above that station which Yahweh has elevated him to or they're going to demote you to a station below that which Yahweh has ordained for you. That's why I wouldn't go to a church because they keep pumping out the Gentile myth that if, you're not, that if you're not Jewish you can't be part of Israel. So I wouldn't go there either and I wouldn't go to a Messianic Jewish congregation either. Because in order to elevate the Jew, the chosen people, they're going to have to demote you and make you less than the Jew in the eyes of men. Baruch Hashem Now look at verse 2. Because of the truth which stays in us and shall be with us forever. Truly redeemed people, listen, will have Yeshua's favor forever. So how long are, are, are the two houses, Kuria and her sister? Now notice we don't know the name of Kuria's sister, do we? Where in this epistle does it say the name of Kuria's sister? We don't know. Why? Because everybody knows John represents Judah, the Jewish people. So they don't need a name because everybody they are the visible remnant of Israel. The other invisible remnant of Israel, they look like Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, Costa Ricans, Ecuadorians, Peruvians. They're all messed up, mixed up. They're looking like Gentiles, acting like Gentiles, eating bacon and pig and, 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 and sausage like Gentiles. They smell like Gentiles. They got all that pork. Oh, oh man. I mean, I mean. So, so in other words, the Jews... The Jews are easily identifiable. When you see an Orthodox Jew with a black hat mm. and pay us, you say, that's a Jew. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that the Jewish chosen sister and her children are nameless? Isn't that interesting? Because it's obvious that it is Judah now through the Apostle Yochanan reaching out to Ephraim and saying, Lady, you are not just, you're no longer twisted. You and your children are relaxed. You and your children are relaxed. Thank you, you are Israel. Not just because you sing it. Singing it, we are Israel, doesn't make you Israel. Speaking Hebrew doesn't make you Israel. You are Israel because Yahweh said that all who dwell and live and breathe and move and have their being among the olive tree of Israel are Israel because you have Israel's king and his Torah, you have his king and his constitution, you have his king, you have Israel's king and Israel's and Israel's instruction manual, his his, his ketuvah. You're Israel. But notice Judah has no name. What is Judah's name? Going back to Ezekiel 23. Oh, Halima. Oh, Halima. Oh, Halima. So Jewish Israel, through the apostle Yohanan, reaches out to Kuria and her children and says, you know something? The truth that you have will be with you forever. You know why? Because that same truth is us. Is in us and will be in us forever. How long will these two houses be united in truth? Forever. 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 When is this two house movement going to fade away? Ever, ever. Honey, let me, can we talk? If you're waiting for this two-house restoration, the regathering and restoration of both houses of Israel to go the way of the Toronto Blessing or the Brownsville Revival, you're going to be waiting an awfully long time. Because this is not a move of man. This is not the Toronto Blessing. This is not the Brownsville Revival. This is the exile of the end of our nation prophesied and written about and spoken about and proclaimed by the prophets of our people for millennia and ages. Hallelujah. It's not gonna change. Hallelujah. And if you're waiting for the two house movement to die down, for this fad to fade away, you're going to be waiting an awfully long time. Marilyn Monroe will be raised from the dead before the two house restoration fades away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at verse 3. Look at verse 3. Favor. Now look, favor. What is the what is the what is the Greek word for favor? It's mistranslated as grace. Listen, everywhere in your Brit Hadashah, New Covenant, where you see the word grace, it is a church translation. The actual word is charis, where we get the Greek word charisma. Charisma is anointing or manifestations 
of Yahweh's power, Yahweh's favor, Yahweh's anointing. Again, everywhere you see the word grace, why? Why do you think the translators did that? To separate Torah from grace, as if the Torah has no grace. That's right. So wherever you see that word grace in the Brit Hadashah, go look it up. Don't take my word for it. The Greek word is charis, where we get the Greek word, the English word charisma, which means personality, manifestation, anointing, favor, and power. So when, when Rav Shul begins his epistles, grace and favor to you and those who love Yeshua, he's saying power, favor, and the anointing of Messiah and his peace be upon you. I'm talking to somebody today. Favor, compassion, peace be with you from Elohim the Father and from the Master Yahshua HaMoshiach, the Son of the Father, in truth and in love. I rejoice greatly because I have found some of your children. Notice, circle that word some. Do all Ephraimites, are all Ephraimites back? No. Are all Ephraimites saved in Torah keeping? No. Are all Ephraimites saved in Shabbat keeping? No. Are all Ephraimites saved in Moadim keeping? No. Are all Ephraimites saved in wearing seat seat? No. Are all Ephraimites into this thing? Are most of them still stuck in the 11 a.m. service tomorrow morning? Yes. Yes. So Yochanan is writing to the former Twisted Sister now who has become straightened out and elected and chosen, but not to all of the sister's children. Some. Some. And you don't know how blessed you are to understand who you are as an Israelite. To understand the revelation and the concept of the regathering and restoration of both houses of Israel. You don't know how chosen you are because some of our people Get it, not all, some. Then verse 1. So who's rejoicing? Yochanan representing the other chosen sister and her children representing Judah. So this, in Second Yochanan, we see Judah rejoicing in the common truth and command from the Father. Now what is the command from the Father? Not Torah. It doesn't say commandments. Command. The command is to love each other as equals and walk in the same truth as equal heirs of citizenship in Israel. Amen. So John representing Judah or the older sister who went backsliding, Ocha Liba says, Ocha Liba, the chosen sister, and her children are rejoicing, Kuria. We don't want you to come into the Messianic movement and sign you up as an associate member. We don't want to, do you know that, can we talk? Do you know that in Messianic Jewish congregations, do you know non-Jews cannot be rabbis? Did you, did you know that? Did you know that non-Jews cannot read from the Torah? Did you know that? In a Messianic Jewish congregation, non-Jews cannot read from the Torah, neither can they be in any position of leadership. You know why? Because they don't understand 2nd Yochanan. 2nd Yochanan is the epilogue of Ezekiel 23. It's the good news that Yahweh can take the same vessel, the twisted sister, and make them into ch two chosen sisters. Y'all not getting this. Yes. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Some, not all Korea's children, where are some of Korea's children right now? Under skirts? Under somebody's skirt? Could be a Baptist skirt, Methodist skirt. Whose skirt are you under? Celebrate. What are you doing under that skirt? Oh, leave me alone. I have a little communion cup. I'm celebrating Christmas. Take that tree out from under that skirt. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. So, so Yochanan is saying, we, who's we? I, your chosen sister and her children, are rejoicing in the common truth and the common command and the common command is that you, the two sisters walk together in unity, in acceptance, in brotherhood, in forgiveness, in chavura, and in love. Yes. In love. Yes. Nothing makes me happier than to take a, a child of Kuria, teach them, disciple them, work with them, and release them into the ministry and make them into a rabbi. Yes, like the congregation of Kuria. Okay? Like Ed Nidell. Okay? Like Marvin Taylor. Like others, yes. 
Nothing makes me happier than to take a child of Korea and to, to encourage them to walk in the command. Look at the end of the look at the verse the end of verse four. Common command. What is a common command? Messiah, Torah, unity and love. Messiah, Torah, unity and love. Messiah. What do Judah, what do these two chosen sisters now have in common? Messiah, Torah, unity, and love. Now look at verse 5. Now I ask you, Korea, <laughs> not as though I write a fresh commandment to you, but that which you have had from the beginning, that we love one another. So the whole purpose of Yeshua's death, burial, and resurrection is not just for both houses to be, go from twisted sisters to chosen elected sisters. It is to really like each other, to really get along with each other, to really respect each other, to really realize that a non-Jewish Israelite from the returning house of Ephraim could be a rabbi or an elder just as easily as a, as a Jew can. Yes. Not just to talk love, but to walk love. How can you walk love when you're not teaching and preaching the equality of the two sisters that are no longer twisted in their head? Yeah. How many know the worst place to be twisted is in your head? Yeah. Yes. Turn to your neighbor. Don't say anything. Just, just stare at them. And while you're staring at them, don't think about twisted sisters. <laughs> now look at me and realize you were just staring at a former twisted sister. But now you're, you're looking at someone who is an elect lady. See, some people's idea of an elect lady is in New York Harbor, the Statue of Liberty. My idea of an elect lady is an Ephraimite who, 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 who used to think that infant baptism saves and, 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 and used to pray the rosary thinking that Mary was going to wake up and answer prayer. And now they're doing the Aliyah. Now they're reading Hebrew. Now there's, 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 they're singing. Oh, he 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 on, te se to now they're dressing modestly. Now they're not dressing in tight pants. Now they're not dressing in tight skirts. Now they don't want to. They don't want to. They don't want to look like the world. They want to look like Yeshua. Amen. That's an elect lady that'll get Yahweh's attention. Are you with me? Yes. And so notice. Uh, Yochanan the Beloved says, this is not an old commandment, this, this is not a, a renewed commandment, it's a, it's, it's a renewed, it's, an, it's not a, let me try that again, it's not an old commandment, it's a renewed yes. commandment. Renew. And the commandment is walk in love, the same way the two houses hated each other for many reasons. How many of the two houses never got along? Right. They fought many civil wars. Yes. But one of the main reasons they didn't get along is they were jealous over the same lover. Yeah. Because Ohaliba and Ohala were chasing the same men, those same strong men. The, the, the Judah was chasing the Babylonian men, and Ephraim was chasing the Assyrian men, but they were both, and he even said about Judah. Then Yahweh was saying in Ezekiel 23, Judah, instead of learning from your sister's mistakes, you went after yes. for lovers. Yes. But not only was your idolatry and abomination bad in my eyes, you stole your, your, your you stole your, you tried to steal, your sister's lovers. Yes. And your sister's lovers are a bunch of no good, idol, idol worshiping, abominable practices. Right. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Now look at verse 5. And now I ask you, Korea, who's Korea? Ephraim. Ephraim, Ochala, or Samaria. Now I ask you, Ochala, or Korea, not as though I write a fresh command that you have from the beginning. From the beginning of what? Of Yahweh's marriage to Israel. From the beginning of Yahweh's marriage to Israel, he wanted all 12 tribes to love one another, to get along with each other. It's not a new commandment. It is for all Israel to walk in Yeshua's love. What does it mean to walk in Yeshua's love? Forgiving one another, even as Mashiach, in, as Yahweh in Mashiach has forgiven you. We're going to get angry with each other. We're going to misunderstand each other. We're going to miscommunicate with each other. Those things will happen. Yeshua said offenses would come. Yes. But woe to those by whom the offense comes and they don't repent. Amen. That's right. So loving the way Yeshua loves means he forgave us our faults and our transgressions. And if, if we can forgive each other, 
each other's faults and transgressions. We're walking like Yeshua walked. It doesn't mean you wait for me to be perfect. It doesn't mean I wait for you to be perfect. It means we forgive, bearing one another, forgiving one another, even as Messiah, Yahweh for Messiah's sake, has forgiven us, Ephesians 4. That's how we ought to walk. Amen. Amen. Now verse 6. Is anyone enjoying? Yes. Amen. I said, is anyone enjoying? Hallelujah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. And this is the love that we walk according to his command. So there's, there's love of forgiveness and acceptance as equal heirs in Israel. But there's also the love toward Yahweh. So, so Kudia and her chosen sister, Judah, are called not just to love each other, but love Yahweh enough to keep his commandments. John 14, 12, if you love me, man, you'll keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Keep Shabbat. I love the Lord. Lion, mama, don't, don't come here with that garbage. If you don't keep the Sabbath, if you don't keep the feast, if you don't follow Yahweh's eternal ordinances, you're, to you're, you're, you're talking a good love game, but you're not walking it. Yeshua said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And my commandments are the same as the Father's commandments, and they're not grievous. So we don't keep Torah for salvation. We keep Torah to show Yahweh we love him. Because Yahweh doesn't need our home. He doesn't need our clothing. He doesn't need our VCR. He doesn't need our computer. The only thing we have that we can give Yahweh is our obedience. Dress right, live right, eat right, talk right. Keep his Torah. This is the command you have heard from the beginning that you should walk in it. So the two commands we've heard from the beginning. One is for all Israel to get along. The other is to keep his Torah and love his Mashiach. Verse 7. Because many who are leading astray went out into the world who do not confess Yeshua the Messiah as coming in the flesh. This one is the one who is leading astray and anti-Messiah. Now look. Now I want to discuss a few things. Because many are leading astray, went out into the world, who do not confess Yeshua as Messiah, come. having come in the flesh. Now I want you to notice, don't miss this now. Turn your neighbor and say, don't miss this. Don't miss don't this. Don't miss Turn your neighbor and say, you look like you're about to miss it if you don't pay attention. You don't look like you're going to miss it if you don't pay attention. <laughs> who is writing to who? It is the house of Yehuda through the Sholiach. Yohanan, writing to Kuria, Ephraim, and s some of her children. Because not all, some of them are still in church. Some of them are still wayward. Not like Marcia says, for now, but not forever. Amen. So some, not all, some. Some are here. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Some are walking in the truth. Now watch. But there is a propensity among the children of who? Kuria. Who's Kuria? Ephraim or Ohala, one of the two former twisted sisters. To have a love. But let's change that. To have a zeal. No, let's change that. To have an idolatrous hunger for everything Jewish. Wow. If it's Jewish, it's right. No, that's not true. A lot of things Jewish are wrong, like praying to the dead. Do you, yeah. you think the Catholics are the only ones who pray to the dead? The Jews prayed for dead people for a year. Yeah. They right. prayed to the spirits of the dearly departed mm -hmm. for a year in your sight. Mm -hmm. That's not biblical. No. No. The Jews call the seventh month the first month, Rosh Hashanah. Yahweh calls it the Feast of Trumpets. Mm -hmm. The Jews call it Rosh Hashanah. Right. The Jews say the Messiah hasn't come. Mm -hmm. Not everything Jewish is right. And so Kuria has this, this insatiable appetite to be more Jewish than the Jews. <laughs> that is the stupidest thing I've ever... I mean, how can you be more Jewish than the Jews? Impossible. That's like trying to be more presidential than George Bush. You don't have an aircraft carrier to land on. You don't have Air Force One. How are you going to be more presidential than Bush, than George W. Bush? So the idea of the two houses, the restoration and regathering of both houses of Israel, is not to be more Jewish than the Jews or the Christians. 
is to be more Torah and biblical and walking as an Israelite as a lifestyle, forsaking the errors of both Ephraim and Judah. But notice, the, those who are leading Kuria astray are in the world, and here's how they get you. They don't get the Jews because the Jews don't, don't believe Messiah has come. <laughs> and, and when they do believe the Mashiach is going to come, he's going to be a nice prince like David and a nice looking boy with power, but he's not going to be Yahweh come in the flesh. So who is Yochanan the beloved warning? The house of returning Ephraim Israel. He's saying, Here, if you're, here's where you're going to miss the whole thing about being a former twisted sister and now being a chosen Alexis.